Hey everybody, Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com, back for another episode with, on the other end of the line, on the UK, Billy from Anxiety United. Say hello, Billy. <laughs> hello there. Good to be here again. Yes, yes. This is the second uh, in our little series that we're going to be doing based on an article I wrote many moons ago um, called Dealing with Anxiety, The Only Way Out is Through. We're going to break this down. Billy and I are going to go break this down kind of section by section through the article and in the video description, whether you're listening on my channel or Billy's channel will be a link to the article. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and do that. Yep. And what are we going to talk about today, my friend? Mate. We are going to talk about the concept of not being in any real danger mm, because yes. it's an important topic. The fact that we, we all go through this, but essentially there is no danger. That is true. So the, the, the topic of today is fear, right? There. Correct. It's all about fear. And fear is probably the fear is the driver behind all of this stuff that we're talking about in the end. So the subheading uh, for me was. Well, we don't want to bleed into the next episode, but yes, fear feeds the beast. But let's just talk yeah. about being in no real danger, I think. that That's important. So why don't you get started? What are your thoughts? Well, I think the, the thing for me, the no real danger, is the, it's the fight or flight response. That's the thing that really stands out for me. I think with the fight or flight, we experience the exact same things that we would if there was a tiger in the car park. You know, that's true. The, the, the problem being that if we experienced the fight or flight and there was a real danger, I don't think that we'd think about how fast our heart was beating or how much air we're taking in because we'd be so focused on dealing with the situation. But I think because it's out of context, that's where the problem lies. It's those the physical sensations, yeah. the symptoms. And because there's nothing that we're actually afraid of there. It just blows your mind, I guess. That's a really good point because there's nothing to focus externally on. So mm -hmm. um, when we get into a panic situation, a panic attack or anxiety becomes really elevated, we are dealing with fear. For the most part, fear is driving it. And yes, it's all about the adrenaline dump, right? So mm -hmm. once, once mm -hmm. that happens, it happens. And these are normal, predictable, measurable physiological responses to the presence of adrenaline in your bloodstream. Um, and we have to recognize that it doesn't necessarily mean just because your heart is pumping and you're breathing heavily, mm -hmm. you're sweating and your legs are jelly. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're really in any kind of danger. There is no real danger. And you there's make nothing a, to, there's nothing to fight or fly from. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. And you make a really good point. Um, since there actually is no external danger, nobody has a gun at your head. There's no lion chasing you. All the things that you said, mm -hmm. you're not hanging from, you know, a cliff or anything mm. like that. Um, there's nothing to focus that on so yeah, yeah. we tend to turn our focus inwards on our thoughts and what we're feeling physio physiologically mm -hmm. and um and that's where the fear comes from yet there's nothing actually there to be afraid of so how do we how do we recognize that and then how do we deal with it because that's really kind of step one here is to recognize that you're not in actual you're not in any real danger maybe we should go through what we what people seem to be afraid of okay so i've made a list of a few of the things or a few of the things that have come to my mind Okay. Um, the fear of going crazy. That's probably a big one. It's one of the top two. I don't know if we want to go through these as a list and then go through them. Sure. Let's, let's blow through. So next I've got, uh, the fear of passing out, which is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, the heart attack, fear of a heart attack. Y yes. The breathing and suffocation. And then a fear of losing control, just completely gone. Yes. And I think, um, when you look at, Study after study, questionnaire after questionnaire over the many years, the top two things that people fear when they get into these situations are the fear of losing control. It, losing control and going insane seem to get lumped together, mm -hmm. like becoming psychotic. And the other one is dying. So you mentioned like having a heart attack. I uh, think well, I read somewhere that for females, it's the going crazy, losing yes, control. And the heart attack is the male thing. Is that it, it seems to be. There's no like yeah. hard evidence of that, but you know, yeah, the yeah. Mars and Venus thing, who the hell knows? I'll never yeah. understand those people. So if you have ovaries, I'm what, talking women? to you. We're never gonna yeah, figure yeah. We're never gonna figure you out. Um, so I probably just had fifty percent of the population of the planet <laughs> boycott our podcast. I'm not sure. I'm gonna edit that bit. Yeah, out. you might want to edit on. that out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, I mean you're right. So men and women tend to perceive it differently, but mm. the, the top two concerns that people seem to have and I think we kind of all relate to them, or is dying or going insane or losing yeah, yeah. control. Yeah, um, definitely. And here's the good news. We pretty much know that no one has ever gone insane during a panic attack or lost control or died. So well, I think one of the points that I made on that, on the going crazy, was that the fact that you know that you're experiencing all this stuff 
essentially says that you're you're of sane enough mind to know that this is happening. So if you were going crazy, you'd probably just be sitting there and stuff would be going on and you wouldn't even really recognize you would know. Well, anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, from a, I mean, it's old school, but the difference between a neurosis and a psychosis and, you know, a, a anxiety disorder, including agoraphobia and GAD and all that stuff, those are neuroses and it doesn't make you crazy. So crazy people don't know they're crazy. Like, that's know. the point I was trying to make, but right. I was going all the way around the no, houses. No, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, crazy people don't know they're crazy. They don't know they're going crazy. Yeah, that's that's it. crazy is a derogatory term, but I am on thin ice today. What is with me? It's like, on Tuesday morning, I'm just defending everybody. It's getting um, confident. Look. That's what it is. That's what it is. So, yes, no one. It's courage. Ever, Courage, yes. No one loses control. No one dies. No one goes insane. No one becomes psychotic during a panic attack. It just doesn't happen. Um, but yet, these are the things that we fear. And the fear is really generated internally, I think, for the most part. It's generated mm. by how we mm. feel and the thoughts that we have. So we should maybe think about that. Um, the difference between a scary thought, and which could certainly signal danger, right? I mean, I know for a lot yeah, of people, yeah. I've heard you talk a lot in the past about negative thoughts. You know, negative I've thoughts never, are such a big deal. I've never you. known, yeah, whether it was a, a sensation that always hits me first or whether it's a thought. Yeah. That's one thing that I've always struggled to come to terms with is is which comes first. Okay. But yeah, negative thinking is a is a big issue for me. Because yeah. when, I, when I get bogged down in the negative thoughts, right. That that's what it is. Because they tend to start with maybe it's not such a a paralyzing negative thought but they just escalate and escalate and one thing leads to another and then it it's the catastrophizing and that's yes. that's where I, th I feel like i kind of lose control i know that i don't but that's where it it becomes just this train of thought that just rolls off right on its own and it's not that losing control of like you know going insane or losing your mind it's losing control of your thoughts right yeah like yeah they, it's they just getting carried away it's getting snowball. carried away with it mm. yeah yeah that could be tough and so i think the source of the fear that we're talking about which is the false fear there really is no real danger is the sensations in our body the racing heart the breathing the jelly legs uh maybe feeling a little off balance or dizzy that's a big one for me i still feel mm. that mm. um primarily that's my still the hardest symptom for me to get past and um but, and then also what goes on in our heads. So like you said, the racing thoughts, the negative thoughts. That's it. The That's catastrophizing. It. What if? There's two phrases that I, always, that I always say that people should probably look out for. One is what if. And the other yeah. one is oh my God. When you get to oh my mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. or, or whatever your analog is, when, yeah, you get, yeah. when you get to what if or oh my God, you've kind of gone off the rails. And then. Oh, here we, here we go. Here we That's go. Right here yeah. it comes. Here it comes. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Or uh-oh is another one. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. um, and so our thoughts can trigger this can feel this feel this fear our our bodies can feel feel this fear are there external things i mean we're talking about the fact that this is fear without any danger behind it can we think of any external things that actually fuel this fear that bring about this so, false fear i don't know whether it this would be classed as that but at the moment in the uk the weather's been really stiflingly hot okay and that's that's something for me that always sets off my panic but okay. that then, to be fair, it's the, it's the air quality, but then yeah. it becomes a breathing thing. So I suppose the external thing is the heat, but then it's my thoughts of I'm not getting enough air or, you know, so it, it goes from that, but then it becomes, and we get on that snowball thing. And That's a good point. It's actually a really good point because I think we can then have external fear. Yeah, yeah, triggers, I think so. Right? Um, but the difference is, again, even in that situation, so maybe it's very hot where you are right now, and maybe humid, but it doesn't. Mm. It doesn't mean you're unsafe. Yet that will trigger this fear thing. Exactly. Right? That's it. So it's not so much the the external influence or whatever that environment. Yeah, it's just a little, is. maybe a little spark or something. Yes, and it's mainly how we interpret it. So mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. anything else, it's how we interpret what our bodies are doing. It's how we interpret our thoughts. It's how we interpret the environment around us that mm -hmm. I think puts us in this false fear situation. I, I'm going to fa false fear, no real danger, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think job one that most of us have is we talked about last week, job, you know, job one really is to understand the framework of accepting and courageous, being courageous and all that persistence and patience. But really then when you get to the nuts and bolts, which is what we're talking about now, the first thing to do is you're going to have to really believe that the fear, even though it feels so real, every bit as mm -hmm. real as if mm -hmm. somebody had a gun is not real. Is the, the fear is real, but the danger this is not. Is it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, down the road, we're going to have to talk about a little bit more about that fear cycle, I guess, and how we're going to deal with that. But uh, really, our goal today was just to sort of unmask that. Mm. Can you think of any times that 
I mean, I know I can. In my own, they're embarrassing sometimes if I think about it. But you know, hey, go on, go on, for, go on, <laughs> share, share. But uh, times when you were absolutely convinced that this, that there was a real danger, but and then you know, it just turned out to be not. I mean, I could think of many times, and for me, it, I never had that fear of going insane or losing control. For me, it was always a fear of physical damage or death. Yeah. And I can remember very clearly over the years, those times where I let it get over the edge, you know, the tipping point, mm-hmm. when, when it, there was nothing you could have done that would have convinced me that I was not having a fatal heart attack or stroke or God knows what sort of physical yeah. thing. Um, and we've all wound up, right, in the emergency room. I've never, or, no, you know, touch wood. You have never I've done never, that. Good for I've you. I've never gone that far. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. I have done that. I mean, it's it's embarrassing to me. I mean, I, not in many, many years, but mm. especially in the beginning, for most, many people, the first thing is you got to run for help. You got to run for help. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, real help, like ambulances and doctors and nurses in a hospital and that sort of stuff. I think it's interesting. You've never gone down that road. That's really, that's it's impressive. really, it's really strange. Usually my go-to thing is to just isolate myself. Okay. That's how I tend to deal with it. I'll, I'll usually run to the bathroom and just splash water on my face wherever I am. That's what I'll do. Huh. We, we used to have a service in the UK by the NHS. I can't remember what it was. I think it was 111 or something like that. It was NHS direct. Okay. So you could phone up this helpline and, and talk about how you were feeling or whatever and they'd sort of guide you or if, if you needed to go in to right. hospital then they would tell you. Right. I, I phoned that once but I I think I was waiting for that long that by the time I'd actually got through I'd kind of... <laughs> felt, felt better. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm thanks, still alive. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that- maybe that... That was their strategy, probably. <laughs> Sometimes it, um, at least here in the U.S., the way it works, and we have a lot of those things. There's no government-sponsored line like that, but mm. um, I mean, there's a ton of helplines and stuff. Usually, in each community, each state, or whatever. But we really do tend to, err, and I understand why this is. We tend to err on the side of caution. So if you call your doctor at eight o'clock at night, yeah. and, he, and you get him on the phone, and or her on the phone, and you say, "This is what I'm feeling," I've had a doctor say to me, "Well, it sounds like you're having a panic attack, but just in case." Yeah, you, know, you yeah. always get that just in case if you're feeling, mm-hmm. if you know, short of breath, you should go to the hospital. And yeah. they'll tell you the same thing. Like, as soon as you walk in, I know in my experience, as soon as you walk in, they look at you and they know. They just know because mm-hmm. they've seen it a million times. They've seen yeah, a million yeah. well, heart attacks, it. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in those situations, I do remember very clearly times when I was absolutely convinced. And not only was I convinced, I acted upon it as if yeah, it yeah. really was yeah. danger. Mm, um, mm. And then went up feeling very embarrassed in the end. So I think many of us have done that. The fact that you have not done that, I think, is so interesting because you you will deal with it by isolating a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's... And and almost then acknowledging even tacitly that that it's generated from in, inside. Mm, like you're mm. almost acknowledging like, well, you know, because if you were having a heart attack, splashing water in your face isn't going to save you. <laughs> no, At least I don't know, really. unless you've invented something yeah. new. But no, no. But you're it is interesting. enough somehow yeah, yeah, subconsciously to know mm. to do that as opposed mm. to go for external help, like medical help. Mm. So that's really great. I think I've, I've learned over the years that just allowing the time to pass. Yeah. Although, I mean, I'm still obviously scared of the symptoms sure. and the sensations, but I know that deep down that if I just... It doesn't matter what I do. Right. It's going to pass. It doesn't matter whether I run around the house or splash water or scream for help or call whoever i know i know deep down that 15 minutes down the road i'll start to feel normal yeah Mm. yeah 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 and that's the benefit of unfortunately for you and i many years of experience experience yes you do learn from experience but you know Mm. in terms of the the no real danger the false fear i'm always fascinated by how you've learned that over the years. I've learned it over the years. Many people that we both personally know have learned that over the years. Mm, mm. There's some mechanism, and in, in, I don't understand where the mechanism is that made you learn that or made me learn that or made Chris learn that or, or the people, Ben, yeah, that yeah. we both know. But, but other people almost never have that light bulb go off. So mm. I, I know of people that are still you know, heading to a hospital when they have a panic attack. They yeah, yeah. never actually fully accepted that there's actually no danger here. Mm. Um, so I'm always... You know, that, that's for some people, if you're listening and you're new to this, you know, it's this you're just now getting into the getting into like it's a hobby. Um, that was that was not the right yeah, way to yeah. say that. But but you're, you're just now first dealing with anxiety and panic and those sort mm. of things. This is probably the hardest lesson to the first lesson to learn the hardest lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's right. not one that I sub- or that I consciously learn something right. just. But I think, like you said, it, it's time. It's experience, unfortunately. 
right. Sadly, we have to have those experiences mm-hmm. to learn this. And even mm-hmm. though, you know, rationally, you may know, like, oh, I'm having another panic attack after panic attack number 10, it might really take until number 30 for you mm-hmm. to really buy into it. Because what you think rationally and what you do during a panic attack are often two very vastly different things. Yeah, uh, yeah. big time. But it all comes down to just understanding that the, the fear isn't real. It's just not real. It, it's not real. I think another part of me, me not calling the emergency department is probably embarrassment as well just feeling like a bit of a doofus yeah i i have been there and in Mm. those times when i have done that and i think i've probably only done that three times if i think back i've I've maybe done it three times uh and not for many many years but you always i always find up wind up feeling so embarrassed and yeah yeah uh, anybody that knows me knows that like i'm stubborn i you know i could be bleeding from the head i will not call the doctor like that's <laughs> just stupid that way but in those situations i ran for help when i really didn't need it so it was embarrassing but maybe we should talk for just a minute about um anticipatory like future fear you know that uh-huh, anticipation uh-huh. which is such a huge part that stands in the way of a lot of recovery for a lot of people and, and the fear that comes, uh, I call it future fear, it's, or anticipatory anxiety, yeah, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Like, that's real fear, too, but it's also not real. So I mean, it's real fear, but the danger isn't real. You know, we're anticipating yeah, yeah. future danger. I don't know if, that, if that's something that you have had. I mean, I think it's, a big, that's a, it's a big one, that's right? It's a, a big one for me, yeah, yeah. Because even though, as we've just been, like I've spoke about panic attacks as if, yeah, it doesn't bother me. But they do bother me. They bother me that much that I anticipate doing pretty much anything at the minute because I don't want to experience even though I know that allowing time to pass will let the panic attack sure subside I still fear bringing that on I don't want to experience it and I think that's probably what keeps me personally stuck in the the loop okay because you've got to be prepared to experience those feelings and learn that the fear is not real yes you know and and there's only so much I feel brave enough in times to put myself through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, but And that anticipatory thing, I mean, I think in a lot of ways, the future fear or the anticipatory fear is what turns, you know, panic attacks or just anxiety into a disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. when we anticipate that we may panic or we may have anxiety and we fear how that's going to be, we're anticipating mm-hmm. future danger that doesn't even actually exist. That's when we begin to modify our lifestyles. Our worlds get a little smaller. We stop. We start avoiding things, people, places, activities. I'm there. Right. And, and that's what turns just anxiety or just a panic attack. Because evidently, almost everybody walking the planet at some point in their life experiences some form of anxiety or even a panic attack here and there. Yeah, um, my, my wife had a panic attack a couple of years ago. Yeah. And she, she had the panic attack. And it was like I was talking around and yeah. I dealt with it like a pro sure because i had so much experience but she's never had another one since and she probably and didn't, didn't give it the, the next thought, day right? yeah exactly like didn't, didn't bat an eyelid. but exactly. yet some the fir- very first time i ever had a panic attack i was i guess i was probably at 18 19 years old and i remember it so clearly and th- you know that immediately had an impact mm. on me immediately Same. that first Same. experience set me on a bad road yeah, you know, your wife has a panic attack and the next day it's like it never happened. So it's, it's surreal. Yeah. So the future that that false danger that we anticipate in the future is a huge deal. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you know, like, well, I have a wedding to go to next week out of town and, you know, I haven't been out of the house in, in three months. What do I do? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. that's that future fear, that anticipation of false danger. That's that's really kind of driving things. I've missed so many family weddings over the last few years. Sure, sure. It's oh, bad. Well, and that's and there's, because of anticipation or future. A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And there's nothing I'd like more than to go and do it, but it's the fear of experiencing those unwanted. Even right. though I know. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's the loop. Well, you know what? If you if you take out a hammer and smash your finger with it, eventually it will stop hurting. We know that, but it doesn't mean mm-hmm. you want to smash your finger with the hammer. Yeah. You know, this I would, is a I would very not good to point. Do that, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I get that. I think it's important for, for people to understand that it's not just we're only talking about false fear during a panic attack. We're also talking about false fear or false danger that we anticipate in the future because when it's happening, that's an event or an episode. But when we anticipate false danger in the future, that's what drives lifestyle changes, and that's what turns mm-hmm. us into a disorder. And that's a real thing. So it's okay to to you know accept that and say like, oh yeah, that's why I don't leave the house because I'm afraid of what might happen. So we have to unmask that false danger also. I yeah. feel like this is a counseling session. 
it's a counseling session. <laughs> Maybe it is. Not, I don't know. Well, I'm not complaining. Yeah. So uh, um, no, it's good because I feel like I I need to. Although I know the nuts and bolts, and we've discussed it many a time. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to take the old tools out of the box, and you know, yeah, keep them sharp. Yeah. 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 Sure. So I, I don't. I, do you think we've have we exhausted the idea that the fear is real, but the danger is not? These are fake dangers. Yes, you are in no real danger. You are in no real danger. Okay, so we've got about 20 minutes, and I think we should probably wrap it up here. So we don't. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Marathons. Yeah. So I guess um, we'll end like we're, we're always going to end. Uh, if you have questions or comments, you could be. There's a million ways you're going to be able to listen to this or watch this. There's Billy's, <laughs> Billy's channel, Anxiety United, on YouTube. There's mine, that Anxiety Guy. So we'll put all the links, you know, the social links. That'll be there. Yeah. Down there. Go ahead. And if you're on YouTube, comment whatever channel you're on. If you're listening to this as a podcast on my website, by all means, comment there. And we'll look for comments and we'll talk about them. And I should yeah, say. Yeah, send the comments that you do. Yeah, I, send them. Right, I think we said that last time. Ask me <laughs> yeah. questions. Billy doesn't want to hear them. No, that's, that's, not, that's not true. I'm busy. Uh, we'll talk about that <laughs> one day, too. I think that whole, like, discussing it too much thing. You and I have talked about that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And how that can be detrimental. But sure, send the comments mm. my way. That's fine. Um, I'll give you the link. Uh, Twitter, that anxiety guy, Facebook.com slash that anxiety guy, or that anxiety guy.com. And I guess my YouTube channel is also that anxiety guy. So where can they find you, Billy? I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Just YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Just YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube.com slash YouTube. anxiety oh, United. Right? Anxiety United. Right, that's, that's it. Good place to That'll go. do. That's all you need to know. That's good. Yeah. So ask us whatever you want. And before we go, we got some really. Did you look at any of the comments? I mean, I haven't seen the comments on your channel. We got some very nice comments from people. There was only a couple on mine, I think. I can't remember what they yeah, were. But somebody commented this morning. Somebody that's watched my uh, 31 Days yeah, series. Yeah. And they've been commenting on pretty much every video. Like okay. they've watched it over the course of the week. And sure. they commented on it. Very so, good. Well, we've got cool. some very, very kind words, and we, we both appreciate that. So keep it coming. Very much. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. So. We're all here. Well, well, I'm here to learn as as well as everybody else. Hey, I'm, I'm learning as we go. So you know, This is it. We'll all pick something up from it. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, folks. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, and I guess we're going to see you next time. We will indeed. See you, dude. Bye for now. Yeah. Ta-ra.